Okay, I'm going to start with a little video to show you guys. Today we're doing keeping conversations going. Okay. Oh, wait, let me just share my sound as well. Sorry, it seems to be very slow today. I don't know what's happening with everything. But I think, teacher, you have to click on unpaused, yeah. Here we go. Hi. Let's talk about the nine conversation killers you'll want to avoid. Those with outstanding conversational skills are more successful and have higher paying jobs. The most powerful people in the world are often the best conversationalists. This has been found to be true in industry, politics, and the military. You can dramatically increase your conversational skills by avoiding the most common conversation mistakes. Avoid these conversation killers. First, hogging the conversation. The whole idea of a conversation is to share information and opinions. That means the other person has an opportunity to speak too. Limit how much you say before allowing the other person to respond. Be a considerate conversation partner. Second, interrupting others. It's rude and makes the other person defensive. Hopefully, you had the chance to complete your thoughts. Extend the same courtesy. You might think that you already know what the other person was going to say. That might be true, but it might not. You'll never know unless you close your mouth and listen. Third, raising inappropriate conversation topics. There are some things you can address with close friends that can't be raised with strangers. A person you barely know might not be comfortable hearing about your colonoscopy or your unfolding divorce proceedings. Be appropriate. Consider a topic carefully before bringing it into the conversation. Fourth, a lack of attention. Are you listening or simply waiting for a chance to talk again? Are you paying attention or scanning the room for a friend? Are you being polite or looking for an opportunity to escape? Your ability to maintain a conversation and build your social circle is dependent on your ability to focus on your conversation partner. Fifth, poor body language. Unfold your arms and appear more inviting. Pay attention to your facial expressions. Smile. You communicate a lot of information with your body language. Keep your mannerisms under control. Do you like to talk with your hands? That can be acceptable in casual situations, but unprofessional in more formal circumstances. Ask a friend if you have any unusual or annoying mannerisms. They can be challenging to eliminate, but you'll strengthen your ability to communicate effectively. Sixth, checking your phone. In today's world, many people are so attached to their phones, they can barely last three minutes without peeking. It's a juvenile habit that conveys a lack of self-control and social grace. Others are offended when you take your attention away from the conversation and direct it to your phone. 7. Cursing. When is it appropriate to curse? That's debatable, but you'll never have a problem if you never curse. If that seems like a bridge too far, at least save your salty language for those times you're alone with an old friend. You'll never create a challenge for yourself by keeping your language clean. 8. Failing to make introductions. Ensure that you make introductions when appropriate. It can be unprofessional and dismissive to skip the introductions. 9. Poor pacing. Have you ever listened to someone that spoke very slowly? It can be frustrating because your brain can understand speech that is quite rapid. Listening to someone that speaks very quickly can make you feel stressed or anxious. Find a word rate that is comfortable for you and acceptable to others. You have a wide range to work with, so try to be reasonable. How good are your conversation skills? What if your skills were significantly better? Your social life, professional life, and confidence would all receive a big boost. Few people try to boost their conversation skills. That means there's not a lot of competition. A little effort can provide fast and meaningful gains in numerous parts of your life.
There we go. So those are tips for conversation killers to avoid. Um, Hi. No, Let's. I want to watch you again. Okay, so we are only a few people today. So I know Tariq I've met before, Gohan I've met before. Um, we've got Manal Ahmed. Um, do you maybe want to take the take the first rodeo and introduce yourself and tell us something interesting about yourself? Yes, hello, teacher. Uh, my name is Manal. I am from Egypt uh, and I am 30 years old and I love language so that I am um, with you. Uh, I am a beginner in English. That's all. Thank you so much. Welcome to the class. <laughs> Thank um, you. Tariq, would you want to be number two? Okay, let's try Gohan. Sure. My name is Gökhan. Uh, I'm from Erdurum, Turkey, uh, but I live in Bursa City. I'm a professional skier. I'm a ski and snowboard instructor. Uh, my goal is to uh, improve and to learn to speak English. I'm married. I have two kids. That's all. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, to be honest, I've never skied on ice in my life. You I think try. I've only seen snow once. You should try. Maybe <laughs> one day. I would want to teach you. Maybe one Perfect. day. Why not? One. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Um, Tari? Also, also uh, I want to say one more thing. I have a lot of my students. They uh, come from every country. Uh, so I want to improve my speaking English because uh, I, uh, we are uh, speaking on the English language. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to help you today to keep those conversations going. Mr. Tariq? Yes, teacher. <clears throat> Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us something interesting about yourself? Yes, yeah, why not? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much, uh, teacher, for the for the chance. So my name is Tariq. I'm from Iraq, but uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. Okay. My name <clears throat> my name is Tariq. I'm from Iraq, but uh, currently I'm living in Malaysia. I'm studying here. I'm doing a PhD in civil engineering. So I would like I would like to improve my English skills so that I can understand people and communicate with them without any problem or obstacles. So that's why I always uh, taking advantage taking the advantages of the classes here to improve my English and increase my English knowledge capacity. <clears throat> the <clears throat> I think the 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 things that I do believe is interesting for uh, those who are like to build their house in a proper way. I can say that uh, <clears throat> I can like design a building, uh, design a building in in a way to uh, fight or to withstand uh, some natural disaster such as earthquake. So I don't have I don't have another skills in terms of hobbies or something like that because i really i really like uh, my, uh, my time sorry is always uh, like uh, limited so but uh, whenever <clears throat> whenever i have a free times i don't hesitate to take to like jump right here on taking the class so sometimes you you don't see me but other times you can see that yeah thank you Awesome, thank you so much. Your English is well on its way. And I can see you have been taking classes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, teacher. Let's move on. So have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and then suddenly there's nothing to talk about and things get very awkward and uncomfortable? So today I want to show you how you can use 
your previous conversation by asking questions to keep the conversation going. There are two words that I would like to introduce to you if you do not know them. Um, let's move to them. The first one is a hypothetical question. So what is a hypothetical question? It is one based on, on subsession and not facts. So what that means is it's things you think about. It's not necessarily true and it might not exist. So they are typically used to elicit opinions and beliefs about imagining situation or conditions that don't exist. Then I have intern intonation as well. Um, the simple meaning of that is it describes how the voice resides and falls in speech. The three main patterns in English are falling notations, rising in notations, and false rise in notations. So in short, that is when you use your voice to talk. If you use different levels, for instance, I do this a lot where if I'm surprised, I use a high pitch. I go, really? Or are you sure? Types like that. So by using your voice to ask questions and relaying your message, that would be inton intonation. Okay. So the types of questions you get to continue your conversation would be a closed question, negative questions, hypothetical questions, question tags, statements with questioning annotations, and open questions. So I'm gonna go into detail into those six questions and then we'll take it to the practical. Okay, so these are the six ones I just mentioned to you. I'm gonna read through this, you can read with me, and then I will give you examples of the different questions. So let's start with the hypothetical questions. These questions typically include the word would, or sometimes might, or could. It all, it's also possible to start this type of question with what if and past tense. Questions like this aren't great for starting a natural sounding conversation, but they're very useful to keep a conversation going when you have run out of ideas. For instance, so what if money were no object? Or what if dinosaurs spoke English? So it's not to say that it exists like dinosaurs, or if money were no object, might not be relevant to your life because money is an object for most of the people who have to work for a living. Okay, the next one is question tags. Okay, so these work in the same way as negative questions, turning a statement into a question. These are often used to check something that we are not sure of. As in the first example, which has rising in notation, or simply to invite the other person to respond to your opinion in which case there's a falling in dotation. So what that means as well, the, it's usually a sentence where you add a question. So it's your opinion and then asking them if they agree or disagree. Usually with the question tags, if your sentence is positive, your tag is going to be negative. Uh, the examples we have are, are you coming, you are coming with, aren't you? Or you haven't eaten, have you? You will see that the, the, the statement, the first part, is either positive, like you are coming with, where the tag is negative, aren't you? Okay, and then the last, uh, the next one would be negative questions. Okay, 
These questions are useful when you want to express your opinion in a way that shows that you want to involve the other person. As these examples show, they can be used to turn an obvious statement into a discussion to make an opinion seem less direct and to check a fact that you're not sure of. Okay, so a negative question would be, hasn't the weather been awful this summer? So you are asking them to, um, to start a discussion about a fact or something you might not be sure about. You might think the weather was awful, while the other person might think it was wonderful. And another example is, shouldn't you wait for a better offer to sell your house? There you can see again, it's a negative question with a statement to try and find more conversation and discussion into the statement. So would you sell your house before you got all your offers? I doubt it. Therefore, negative questions can be asked to discuss something more thoroughly. Okay, an open question. <clears throat> In theory, these are good for opening a conversation up because there are many possible answers. In practice, questions with why or how are often better at opening up conversations than questions where or when, which can often be answered with a single word or phrase. So open questions are those you can't answer with a yes or no. You have to elaborate in order to answer. So the examples are, where do you come from? Or where did you go on holiday this year? Okay, that, that's quite easy. An uh, open question is something that you have to respond with more than one word. Okay, statements with questioning intonations. This is again the ones where you use your voice, the different levels. Um, these are the easiest questions to make. They can be a very effective way of checking information and encouraging the other person to expand on something he or she said earlier. Uh, you can change the focus of the questions simply by stressing different words. Okay, so that's where you use your tone of voice to change the question. The examples, for instance, if you ask somebody, are you sure? It sounds very normal, but if you go, are you sure? It gives a little bit of uncertainty in your voice that would make the other person think twice. Um, the next example, you work in pharmaceuticals, can be asked, you work in pharmaceuticals? using your voice tone to differentiate and put the focus on different words. Okay, the closed questions, the last one. In theory, these close down the conversation by allowing a one word answer, yes or no. In practice, only a very rude person would answer with a single word. So they can be actually very effective for they aren't very effective for keeping conversations going. Uh, we try to avoid closed questions unless you are tired of speaking to somebody. Uh, closed questions, examples, for instance, uh, do you work here? Do you do any sports? Have you had ice cream? So these are questions that require a yes or no answer. They can elaborate on the answer, but usually it's quite end of close conversation. Okay, so now um, we're gonna go on to a few questions. And I would like to know from you what type of question you think it is. Um, and I will, if you can raise your hand, I will ask you, we are only three people in the class right now. And we're gonna go as far as we possibly can because there's nine minutes left and then I have to go, but I will reschedule this whole class and present it again.
Okay, so the first one is, do you do any sports? Um, the, I want to know, Goha, go, I keep on mispronouncing and I'm really Gokha. sorry. Yeah, Gokha. Gokha. <laughs> okay, so yeah. those are your three options. Which type of question do you think, do you do any sports is? Most question because answer is yes or no. There we go. It's a closed question. That was a very easy one. Okay. And um, the next one, Manal, would you want to take it? Didn't yes. you used to work in China? There are your options. Yes. Uh, negative. Perfect. That is a negative question. Okay. The next one is your wife's a doctor, isn't she? Um, who wants to take a guess there? Ooh, your options are hypothetical question, negative question, or a question tag. Any takers? Go ahead. Hypothetic. Uh, hypo Hypothetical question. That is incorrect. Yeah. Yes, question tag. Yes, she is. A question tag. Thank you, Tyreek. So do you see, I'm going, the first part of the sentence, your wife's a doctor is a statement. And if you add the tag, the question tag, you get, isn't she? Do you, the little comma is the giveaway because then you add a tag. If your sentence was, your wife isn't a doctor, it would be, is she? A positive, go with a negative. Yeah. Okay. So that's a question tag. The next one is, why didn't you come to the conference last year? Is there anybody that wants to take a gamble there? This is a trick question, by the way. Veronica? Open question. That is correct. Well done. Okay. Thank the you. next one we have is, and there is nothing you can do about it. Anybody wants to take a chance there? I'm going to repeat it. Listen to the way I say it. And I there's nothing have... you can do about it. Uh, Manal, you can go. Yes. Yeah, you can go. As the first one, statement with the question and uh, intonations. There we go. That was perfect. <laughs> Next you. one is, in an ideal world, what would your dream job be? Do we have any takers? Veronica, if you want to take a chance there. Hypothetical question. Yes. A hypothetical question. That is correct. Yay. It's quite a it's quite a big word. Hypothetical. Okay. The next one we have. Have you had a holiday this year? There are your three suggest or three options. Anybody want to take a guess? Manal? Yes, closed question. That is indeed a closed question. It's an easy one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done. Okay. Where did you go on holiday this year? Goha? Open question. That is correct. <laughs> Sorry. That is correct. Well done. Okay. We've got the next one that just says, really? Veronica? Statements with, but with questioning intonation. Perfect. That is it. Okay, then we've got, so what if money were no object? There are your three options. 
Any takers? Veronica, your hand is up. Hypothe hypothetical questions. That is correct. That is a hypothetical question. Okay. I've got four minutes left. Um, what we're going to do now, I'm going to push it to see how far I can get. Okay. Imagine you were talking to a stranger at a conference. Think of two questions you could ask about a topic. Okay. So I'm going to give, give everybody a chance. You can choose a topic. And I need two questions and they can't be the same. They either have to be, let's avoid closed, um, tags, negative, hypothetical, any of those. But try to challenge yourself by picking one of those categories and then making the two questions. Um, I'm going to give you a second and then I'm just going to ask Tariq to go first. <clears throat> okay okay yeah i would like so that means we i have to choose another person to answer my question or to we uh, uh let's try let's try that way we can oh, ask that okay. was my last the last exercise but we can do it now we are at okay. least just a few yeah so <clears throat> so what, what, what so who, who is my partner you can ask Manal. Okay. Hello, Manal. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Is you? Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, thank you so much for uh, like uh, taking part. So, I would like I would like to ask you about the work that you are involved in. Actually, I don't work. You don't work. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so another, can I ask her another question, teacher? Yes. Yeah. So what is your, what, what are, or what is your hobby, hobbies or hobby? My hobbies, I, uh, I love learn a language. That's you are what? Love learning language. There we mm. go. Love learning okay. language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tari. Yeah. While You're we've welcome. got we've got Manal, you can ask Veronica two questions about any topic there. Manal. What I can hear you. I can't hear you. Um, can you? Uh, think of two questions that you can ask Veronica from the categories or the topics there. Yeah, for example, uh, are you from America? Isn't you? Aren't you? Or uh, there we go. <laughs> are you? Sorry. She are asked. You? Are you from America? Aren't you? Uh, so I don't. Sorry, Veronica. Manal, that should actually be you are from America, aren't you? Where you have your statement and the question. Where are you from America is already a question. Okay. So it will be a statement, you are, with the aren't you at the end. Okay, do you want to try another question to Veronica? Uh, so, what are you doing in holidays? Veronica, what are you doing the holidays? Um, I will, uh, I will. Going holiday in August, maybe. So you only have holiday in August, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And what, um, Manal, do you want to ask another question? Uh, 
هاي هاي دونو If you could, let's take um, a hypothetical question. Hypothetical questions are usually, they are sometimes funny, they can be funny, but you take a statement, let's see, let's say, um, hypothetically speaking, Veronica, what would you do if you won a million rand, a million dollars? Sorry, I was talking South African there. So that is hypothetical. It's something that could happen. Um, and you can also say, uh, Veronica, if you could go anywhere, where would you go on holiday? So you can use that as an example. Do you want to try another question? Okay, Veronica, do you want to ask Gohan a question from those? Um, yeah. Um, uh, for, for, for who? Uh, for Gohan. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, so if you are. Uh, um mm, mm. if you if you will go in mars uh, what do you do it here uh, what do you do here yeah Okay. What to do? My profession, my job is ski instruction, ski instructor. Ski I'm doing ski. Uh, ski teaching. So you teach people how to ski yeah. on ice. Because you get water skiing as well. No. On the no in no. South Africa, you get water skiing. We don't have ice there. So, okay. Gohan, do you want to close this lesson? Sorry, guys, I need to go. And um, no. do you want to ask me a question? Sure. Okay. Have you ever visited in Europe in your holiday? No. Have you been in Europe in your holiday? No. No. So it's a closed question. I have actually never been to Europe. Um, yeah, I haven't really traveled outside of South Africa, to be quite honest. So one day I'll travel with and go visit everybody everywhere. There we go. Tari, I see yeah. you've got your hand up. Yeah, so I would like to ask you, teacher, about, uh, to ask you hypothetical uh, questions. Okay. So I would, yeah, I would like to know if you have got uh, a final airline ticket, where would you travel to? If I had a final airline ticket, where would I travel to? Hmm. Uh, I don't I don't think I would travel anywhere on earth. Maybe maybe to a secluded island mm -hmm. and be the yeah. only person there. I quite like mm -hmm. being alone. Uh -huh. Women scare me. <laughs> Ah, uh -huh, right, really. You, you like you like you like you like to be alone. Uh, very much so, very much so. I prefer oh. my own conversation. I'm quite an introverted person, but sometimes you need to bite the bullet. I see enough people on the screens. But so I think you are. But I think you say you. It, it is demonstrated that you are not that a person who likes to be alone at all ah, see. So you're, you're, because you are interaction or you're <laughs> you are like uh, in, uh, like engagement with the like uh, participants here seems that you are you does you you don't like to be alone at all maybe see, maybe <laughs> I, uh, yeah don't judge a book by its cover 
Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Guys, yeah, yeah, I yeah. unfortunately need to go. I've got other commitments. Because the class did start a bit later, I will ask them if I can have another slot this week. Um, and I will get back, or they'll post it on the groups. Thank you so much, yeah. teacher, for your time and your thought. Thank you. Thank you, <clears> guys, <throat> so much. Sorry that it's so short today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, teacher. I would like for you uh, to stick around just a couple of minutes, uh, if you could. Give us an evaluation of how she did. Uh, did you like the, the topic? Did she interest you? Did you feel comfortable working with her? So the question, Mr. Robert, the question to the participants or to, or to yes. the teacher? No, no, to you, to the participants, the, the students. Okay. Yeah, but I think uh, the the answer for the question should be in a private. So I. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 not like that. I'm answers. just joking. I'm yeah, just no, joking. Answers, no, 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 please, please. Private, but in in you know those things that you can say in in the group. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm asking okay. you to. Yeah, I I can say in general uh, the class uh, was more informative uh, because I. They didn't came they didn't come across to like organizing or to group in uh, such kind uh, they could the question into like many categories okay because uh, I I think this is the first time to like learn how to group the questions or how to identify the question in terms of open closed negative or hypothetical question. The, the the class was really informative and I learned something new from the teacher side. Thank you so much. Okay, Tariq. Um, would someone else like to share uh, something that maybe we could do better or something that you really liked? I agree with Tariq. Uh, he said that uh, I'm thinking like a Tariq. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, it's, Mr. Robert, uh, it's a good uh, approach to uh, a different way to learn, and for for me to uh, improve the English and um, a different focus. And uh, yeah, it's it's a good lesson. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. What I would like to do, where, where I am uh, taking part in helping the teacher, uh, I would yeah. like to ask these questions of you guys. So um, I don't know how long, how often I'll be able to do this. But any any other comments before we leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to add a little uh, something about the like hair way to teach the to teach us. I think the the way that. Uh, uh, she used to speak English is very good and uh, I can understand her without any problem and her pronunciation is very clear. Okay, okay. So, so that's very important for me to like understand what the uh, the idea of uh, what the idea that the teachers has to deliver to the participants. Okay, yeah, that's important so, because sometimes uh... Uh, we as native speakers lose lose track of who we're talking with, and that's uh, you know that's important because we have the ability to tailor the way we talk depending on who we're talking with. And I yeah. think she, I think I agree with you. She did a very good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have somebody else. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. so we'll see. Thank Thanks you. for stopping by. Thank you, Teacher Mariska Robert. Uh, native, native teachers is really important for us. Uh, all teachers kindly and generous, but uh, like um, Mariska speaking uh, native language really important for us. I would want to more uh, classes from the Mariska and uh, like Mariska teachers. Uh, yeah, well, like this. It's really okay. Yeah, raise Mar your, Mariska, raise your uh, classes, please, Mariska. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you. guys, that's going to be it. I'm going to go ahead and close the room. Uh, yeah. No more classes are scheduled for today. 
Uh, I don't know what the schedule is for uh, tomorrow. So thank you again. And, thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.